Hey, everybody, welcome to the Gym Masters Show Live Entertainment Lifestyle Talk Show Series. How is everybody doing? I see all those smiley faces all around the world. It's good to have you with us. It is Monday. We are live. I know many of you also watch our series later on in the archives at our YouTube channel, Gym Masters TV. Well, however you watch our show, it's a pleasure to have you here today. We've done Boy, we were counting up over the weekend. We've done about 420 live episodes seven days a week of our Entertainment Lifestyle Talk Show series. And this continues to be an extraordinary pleasure with inspiring conversations, amazing guests from Broadway, Hollywood, television, film, music, as well as culinary arts, sports, comedy, inspiration, you name it, literally from all around the world. Our audience is international as well. We have viewers that watch religiously live or later on in the archives on our YouTube channel, Gym Masters TV, all across the United States, Canada, Europe, as well as Africa, Australia, Asia, and wherever you're watching, whatever time of day it is, you're always welcome here on our show. Uh, this is patterned after some of the old school talk shows where we have conversation, warm freestyle. And uh, think about those shows like Dick Cavett and Merv Griffin, Mike Douglas, Johnny Carson, where they had really good, uh, inspiring conversations, sometimes levity. We always learn something. And we blend that world with a modern twist. And I do this work professionally in television radio uh, as a TV and radio personality, uh, journalist, writer, producer, voiceover artist, uh, host, and um, been doing this work for a long time, stage MC. And uh, we turned on the lights and we said, hey, let's uh, get together with everybody and bring some smiles to people's faces and inspire them. So that's what we do on the show with amazing guests. It's good to see everybody here. Those of you, again, watching live on our YouTube channel or later on the YouTube channel, we would love it if you do subscribe to the channel, of course. Uh, that helps the show. And there it is. You see it on the bottom of your screen. It's Gym Masters TV. And when you subscribe, don't forget to click that notification bell so you don't miss any of the amazing episodes that we do, daily live episodes here on our YouTube channel, Gym Masters TV and the Gym Masters Show Live. So click that notification bell, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and also uh, give a thumbs up to this episode right there on the YouTube channel and drop a comment on the bottom. We would love that. That would be fantastic. Let us know you really, really enjoy our series that we work very hard behind the scenes to present to you Literally, we've been doing it every single day. We welcome you, of course, to the show, and it's great to have everybody here. And as, of course, we mentioned, subscribe to the YouTube channel. Hello to all the loveties. That's right. We say the show has a lot of light, love, and levity. And in the summer, I slipped up and said lovety, and you guys fell in love with that word. So you guys are now the loveties, and we really appreciate everybody tuning in from around the world who calls himself a lovety. It's really cool to have you here. It's also very cool to have a very special guest. Oh, you know her. Either you've heard her incredible voice or you've seen her perform on television and film and so much more. I'm talking about the extraordinary and award-winning film, stage, and television actress and Grammy-nominated recording artist, the incredible... Eileen Graff. Yes, she is in Los Angeles, California, Grammy-nominated recording artist, best known to audiences, Marsha Owens, the mom on the long-running ABC comedy, Mr. Belvedere. Yes, how many of you, along with me, watched and thoroughly enjoyed Mr. Belvedere on ABC? She made her professional Broadway debut years earlier, of course, on the musical stage in Promises, Promises, the Neil Simon uh, Burt Bacharach, David Hitt, of course, where she understudied the leading lady and sang backups from the orchestra pit. She performed the role of Friend in New York a dozen times before starring in the national tour. In addition, playing the role of Bob Euchre's wife of, on Mr. Belvedere, uh, Eileen, of course, starred in two other series, several pilots, guest starred on many episodic TV shows and miniseries and so much more. She even shared the screen with the one and only Rodney Dangerfield in the feature film Ladybugs, very proud to have uh, co-starred in a Disney ABC film, South Pacific, working with Academy Award nominee and Tony Award winner Glenn Close and Academy Award winner Harry Connick Jr., a Grammy Award winner, that is. And Eileen is also a co-author of What the Other Mothers Know. And uh, that was published by HarperCollins. It's a funny and practical guide to parenting in the 21st century from three witty mothers who <laughs> have literally 
seen and lived it all. It's currently her project, uh, Making the Song Your Own, is a program that teams up with her, of course, uh, coveted and renowned Broadway credited music composer husband, Ben Lanzarone, when they decided to start offering their knowledge to others of all backgrounds who had a love of music, they created this incredible Making the Song Your Own. These are wonderful classes that um, had established celebrities um, to regular music lovers, mixing them together, making for a very eclectic group. And uh, there's been incredible people talk about that. Some of the folks who have been involved in it are extraordinary. I'm going to talk about the performance walk workshop in just a moment. But first, let me welcome our illustrious guest, again, live and direct from Los Angeles, California, the one and only Eileen Graff. Eileen, welcome. How are you today? I'm fine. My life just flashed across flash. my mind. It's like, <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> it's like I'm Ralph Edwards and this <laughs> is your life. <laughs> it's your life. It's, it's really interesting. You don't think about all the things you've done. You know, you get up in the morning, you do your things, you go to the market, you know, you, you take care of business. And then someone like you, Jim, will start reading off your life and you go, oh, I'm exhausted just listening to, <laughs> listening to everything and thinking about all the different things you've done but that's true for everybody not necessarily just in show business but all of us you know when we reach a certain point there's a whole bunch of stuff that we've done and we don't we you know who, who thinks about all of it and it's fun to be reminded sometimes so uh so thank you for for uh opening my eyes up to what's <laughs> going on for the past 50 years <laughs> yeah, it's hard to believe that was that 50 went by in a new york minute didn't it in a new york oh. minute you know i my my first broadway show promises promises was right after i graduated from college i went to ithaca college upstate new york and that was 50 years ago so I have been a, um, a professional working actress for 50 years and uh, something that my union, Actors' Equity, reminded me of. They sent an email and saying, congratulations on reaching this wonderful milestone. I'm thinking, I've been around a really long time. <laughs> <laughs> it really is amazing. And you've stayed busy and you've stayed connected and uh, it goes all the way back. Were you... Were you a child growing up who was always interested in entertaining and the arts, were you always singing and dancing in the living room and entertaining the family or did this develop over time for you, Eileen? I grew up in show business. So uh, my childhood was a little different from a lot of other people's. Um, my dad was a professional singer. He had a very successful, oh, there's my dad. Oh, mm. look at this cute picture. That's my, I'm the, the older, taller one in the back with my two brothers on the, on each end of that picture, my cousin Steve and my cousin Lori. So my dad had a very successful nightclub act. And um, so I, I grew up in show business. And then when he stopped doing nightclubs, he moved back to New York and became a very busy studio singer. So I've been hanging out with uh, with the singers my whole life. And it was something that I could do. Uh, I could right. always sing. I sang in tune. Uh, so it wasn't that huge a leap to kind of go into the to go into the trade as if we had been in the garment business or the jewelry business. You know, you, I was lucky that I that I had a little bit of talent and uh, could just move right into doing what I did. What would you consider one of the first uh, door opening opportunities for you in that vein, Eileen, where that production, that project, that opportunity really set forth this snowball effect of other opportunities and people really appreciating your extraordinary talent early on for you? That's an interesting question. I guess the first thing would have to be promises. You know, as a, as a kid, coming out of school and you know my dad got me that audition for promises so it it all comes back to family right everything in our lives everything that we do seems to always come back to family he got me the audition because he was good friends with the musical director and uh i i got the job and that's sort of you know when you get a broadway show it it's a great thing to have on your resume and people become aware that you're a good worker, that you're a good employee, that you're dependable, that you can do what's asked of you. And that goes a long way towards opening the next doors. If you if you deliver on your job, 
uh, then you're more likely to get the next job. So I would say that doing promises, you know, sitting in the orchestra pit, being a backup singer, being an understudy was a fantastic first job that led to the second job. And uh, I think that was a really important moment for me. Absolutely, absolutely. And, you know, these pivotal moments are what really shape us along the way. And uh, we did a little research here and we dug out a fantastic photo here. Maybe you can take us through. Look at that shot. <laughs> well, that's from college. Yeah. Oh my God, have you, you delving into uh, my, my college we're Delving Facebook. in and uh, telling the story. Yeah. Isn't that cool? This this is uh, from Ithaca College. I mm -hmm. think, you know, I think it was, was this, um, this might have been Brecht on Brecht. I'm not absolutely sure. Yeah, um, I think so. I'm, I'm on the, uh, as you look at this picture, I'm on the left, the third girl from the left, or right. the second girl on the right. And um, it, Ithaca College was a great training ground. Uh, there are people in this picture who, have gone on to Broadway shows. Uh, one of the gentlemen in this picture went on to be a very, very successful uh, TV producer. One of the people in this picture became one of the first pilots, women pilots in the wow. Air Force. So, you know, I always say um, an arts education is never wasted, no matter what field you eventually go into, nothing is like the discipline and the focus that uh, an education in the arts gives you. Absolutely. And look at this. <laughs> there we are. That we have. You haven't changed a bit. You look the same. How that's amazing. <laughs> we had a drama fraternity. You know, we were always the odd ones, the, the drama students. At the college was a very traditional, wonderful liberal arts school upstate yeah. New York. And the drama people, we had a fraternity because we didn't believe in, you know, all that. Uh, you know, I, yeah. Anyway, yeah. <laughs> it, was, it was just great. It was boys and girls, and um, we. It just was a really special time. So that's everybody from yeah, from the 1970 class, uh, not the 1970 graduating class, but the class of people who were in the fraternity at that time. Yeah. We were very silly. We did lots of silly things, and we yeah. had a. Lot <laughs> you had a good time, a good time, which is which is perfect. That's what you want to do. Hey, here's another great shot. Look at this. Oh, yeah, I love that picture. This is from the National Tour of Promises Promises. Um, my co-stars, Ted Pugh, is playing the uh, tennis racket. <laughs> and yeah. Barney Martin, who a lot of people will probably recognize from Seinfeld. Yes. Uh, he was also in the show, and we toured around America for nine months with Promises. Ted was a very successful actor in New York and a very successful commercial actor. Yeah. He was part of a team. Um, you see, now I don't remember what market it was. It might have been a and I don't remember, yeah. for yeah. Price and Pride. And, he, I mean, the campaign. Oh, uh, yeah. It was either A&P or Pantry Pride, one of them. Yeah. Something like that. I just don't remember. I wish I could remember. But we, uh, it was a really interesting experience being on the road, all different kinds of theaters, different kinds of audiences all across the country. Nine months, it's a long time, but it was great. Yeah, that, that was quite a thing, right? That was just, I mean, a beloved Neil Simon, Burt Backer, Hal David, Jerry Orbach. I mean, you're, you're surrounded also by extraordinary talent early mm -hmm. on, huh? Yeah, really, you know, when you're a replacement, and I was a replacement in the show, um, you don't get that hands-on experience of working with the creators, but you work with the people who have been entrusted by the creators to do the work. So we had a fabulous staff that taught us the, uh, taught us the show, directed us, put us into the show, and the same thing for the national tour. Uh, we were very well taken care of. Uh, I knew Hal David, because he, again, my dad, he and my dad were in the army together. They were in special services during World War II, which meant that they put on shows for the service members in the army uh, in Hawaii and the South Pacific. And Hal and my dad were in the same unit in special services. So I've known wow. Hal, what, all my life? Yeah, I guess. All your life, yeah, when you think about it, huh? You knew of him, but didn't get to know him until much, much, much later. 
but yeah. certainly knew that he was an important person in my father's life. Yeah. Other members of the family, you mentioned your dad, other members of the family in the arts, in performance as well. I know, of course, your daughter uh, and, and your husband, um, other siblings, others within the immediate family originally? Well, I have two brothers. One brother is a salesman. He managed to not go into show business. Um, but my youngest brother, Todd Graff, is a, uh, he's, started out as a performer as a young child, has been working, earning a living since he's, what, seven years old, doing commercials and jingles. He was on the electric company oh, when he was yeah. a little guy. With Rita Moreno, Morgan yeah. Freeman. Yeah. Yeah. PBS. Yep. And he became, yeah, PBS, you know all about that. And he uh, became a, oh, he was nominated for a Tony for a, sh a show called Baby that he did on Broadway. Very accomplished guy. And then went on to become a writer and director of movies which is what he's doing now. And, uh, and, and he's doing great, you know? Yeah, he's doing great. that's fantastic. Um, and your daughter too, you mentioned uh, that your daughter, of course, we've got this great shot here. Aww. I love that shot of the three of you. Yeah. Um, she is uh, a wonderful performer herself too, huh? She is, she's a musical theater performer. Uh, she's based in New York. She's done a couple of Broadway shows. Uh, she created a role in Women on the Verge of a Nervous Breakdown, co-starring with the, the Patty Lupone and Brian yeah. Mitchell. I mean, what an experience that was. She played Velma Kelly in Chicago on Broadway. And right before the, oh, this is Nika and me singing on stage at uh, 54 Below. 54 Below, yeah. yeah. We put together a, a duet show at their request. They said, would you and Nika like to put a show together for us? And we said, would we? So that's what that was. Yeah, that was that. And that's my husband's shiny white head sitting playing the piano. <laughs> He's our musical director and he writes all of our arrangements and of course always plays for us. He's he's quite the guy, quite the musician. Isn't it? Oh, absolutely. A legend yeah. in the business. Um, performing together must be wonderful. And when you're, you know, when you guys are on stage playing off each other so beautifully, you know, not only hitting the notes, but having a wonderful time doing it too, right? Spending that quality and precious time together. Absolutely. Uh, there's nothing I like better than than working with her, working with Ben and my family. And in fact, a few years before this duet show, uh, the Graf family did a holiday special for 54 Below with uh, Todd and Eileen and Nika and my cousin Randy Graf, my first cousin Randy Graf, who is Broadway royalty. She's a Tony Award winner yes. for uh, Cy Coleman's City of Angels. And she was in the original Broadway production of Les Mis and many, many Broadway shows. So we put a show together for the four of us at 54 Below a Holiday Show that was maybe the most fun ever. You know, when the, the four of us have very different individual singing voices, but when we sang together, it was like magic. <laughs> so do you have plans to have uh, that resurrected and do more of that together in the future? You know, I would love to. And, you know, listening to your schedule, what you do every day just is so much. And I think all of us know that life is about scheduling and being able to find time that you can do stuff all together. That holiday show just seemed to be a confluence of fabulous events that we were all free at the same time to yeah. work together. So it's a little tough getting us together, all four of us, but we, um, Nika and I, well, no, I, and I'm hoping to rope her into being one of my special guests, will be doing, um, a holiday show at 54 below this December. And I'm hoping that Nika will be one of my special guests because uh, she's great and we love working together. I'm hoping to get my brother on an airplane. He lives in LA to come to New York to be my special guest, but I don't know if I'm gonna succeed in that. Um, and uh, you know, if any other opportunities come up along the way, I will grab them. Absolutely, absolutely. And you've always, you know, been so busy and people just love you because as I was saying off air and I'm happy to say on the air, you're so affable and approachable and warm and, and everything that you take on 
you give 110%. You really are so invested, whether it's television, stage, film, music, uh, you really thoroughly understand the business, appreciate it, and love the work, don't you? It, it really shows. Thank you, that's very nice of you to say. I think for most of us who do this, we love the work. I, I love to sing. I love the physical sensation of singing. I love putting a performance together. I just love to sing. I love to, to be in something that well -written. I love saying funny lines. Um, I, I love the whole process of seeing what all the other crafts do, you know, from getting to a set early in the morning to what is makeup and hair? What is their responsibility? What does the AD have to do? What does the DP do? You know, the director of photography, what, it, what is the wardrobe department doing? All of that stuff, all of that work and process I find fascinating. And I, and I love learning about everybody's job. And I think that's part of being invested in what you do is, yeah. is knowing what you, is knowing what everybody does. So everybody can, you know, it's a team sport. Yes. <laughs> We're not yeah. a show, it's a team sport. And we all have to do our part uh, well. Yes, I agree. And one of the things that I love about you and have over the years is you are versatile. Um, I mean, you've taken on a lot of different roles, a lot of different positions within the industry. And I think that's fantastic. You know, some people, they're just a singer or just an actor or just this, but you've been able to, like you say, you appreciate all aspects. That's how I was trained coming up the ranks too, is know what everybody is doing and appreciate what everybody's doing because you never know as well when they may call on you because the other person is sick, the other person is not available, and there you are, and now suddenly you're doing this. And it also gives you a more well-rounded appreciation of the total effort and the resulting work when you appreciate and uh, understand and maybe even have an opportunity to do the various things even behind the scenes as well, right? Oh, absolutely. Someone recently asked me what, what piece of, people always ask you this, what piece of advice do you give, you know, and, and not in terms of how am I going to be a star? You know, right. to me that's, I don't know how to be a star. No, I, nobody knows. You just got to be whatever. It's, it's irrelevant. How do I be a star? But they said, what, what, what's the best piece of advice you can give somebody who's going into the business? And I said, sort of hearkening back what I just said before, learn everybody's job and do everybody's job. And that's one of the best parts about going to college is that um, I had to climb ladders and hang lights. I had to build sets. I had to sew costumes. I had to work in the box office. I had to produce a schedule. I had to do all these things, skills that I've continued to do because I've, I've produced concerts. I've, I've produced many benefits. Um, and I said, that's, you don't have to end up doing those jobs professionally, but, it, but, but know what everybody does. It's just yeah. gonna make you a better employee and a better human. I really, really believe that. Are there things that uh, you still wanna tackle within the industry that you haven't had a chance to dip your feet in yet? Uh, do you love directing and producing and writing and all of the rest? Well, I, I always say there there are two things that I still want to do. I still want to sing with a symphony orchestra. Mm -hmm. I have not done that yet. <laughs> Time is a wasting. Never say never, right? I really want to sing with a symphony orchestra. And I want to be in a Hallmark Christmas movie. I'm one of those people that watches Hallmark Christmas movies. And um, I keep putting it out there. I just keep putting it out there that one of these days I'm gonna sing with a symphony and be in a Hallmark Christmas movie. But in terms of writing or directing, you know, the um I don't I do I do a lot of writing, but I don't do script writing per se. Uh I think everybody nowadays has to write. You always have to write a report, you're always writing um a position paper. You know, I do a um when you organize any kind of event, you're writing constantly about 
what the scheduling is and all of that. So there's a lot of writing that way, but I'm not a, I'm not a script writer. That's what my brother Todd does so yeah. very, very well. Um, and I'm, I'm, I'm not a songwriter, although my husband and I did write a song together a couple of years ago, our first effort that we wrote a holiday song together that um, was very well received at my holiday concerts. So that's fine. Maybe we'll do some more of that. And um, I do like telling people what to do. So maybe I should do a little <laughs> directing. <laughs> that's <laughs> be bossy. You know, I can, but you know, I think I, I could be bossy, but I could really, but mostly I'm, Very well. <laughs> so, <you> know, <laughs> whatever you need for that day, I'm there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, you certainly did a fantastic job keeping everybody in line on Mr. Belvedere. The kids, Mr. Belvedere, Bob, uh, you kept everybody uh, in line. And well, well, tell us about that amazing opportunity uh, to be in what is considered, you know, a beloved sitcom uh, that people refer to fondly. Uh, and, and the casting was absolutely perfect. You all played off each other beautifully and to the point where it really felt like a real family, real people, real issues, lots of comedy. Um, how did that opportunity develop for you, Eileen? You know, you go on a lot of auditions in your life. Yeah. I went on an audition. A script came to the house. I went in on, a, on an audition. I had a couple of callbacks and I got the job. It was one of the least harrowing, least harrowing audition experiences I've had. And I found that to be true throughout my career. The jobs that seem to be the easiest to get, easy being a relative term, were the ones that were the best jobs. Wow. Uh, so... Um, there were a couple of auditions just for the producers in their office and a couple of call, a call back or two. And then uh, what we call a, a net, you, you go to network. Yeah. Uh, which is a, a phrase where you actually go to the offices of the network. This was uh, ABC at mm -hmm. the time. I'm not sure if it works exactly the same way now, but it probably does. Um and you meet the all the muckety mucks and the higher ups. And I had and Bob Uecker was there because he was attached to the project. And we just hit it off from the first second. We just had it just sparked. We just sparked. And um, I came home from that audition and I said, gosh, that went really well. I'm feeling pretty good about this. And uh, lo and behold, they called and said, OK, it's yours. And um, what a happy day that was. And a very Absolutely. Happy, happy five and a half years after that. Um, had you planned, had you thought, had you prepared f to perform in a sitcom? Was that something on Eileen's uh, bucket list or that was an opportunity that came along and uh, you seized it and you were ideal for the part? Um, had you thought one day, gee, I wonder if I'll be on a sitcom. <laughs> Um, absolutely. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> absolutely. When I was doing my last Broadway show, which was called I Love My Wife, uh, which is the role that I got to create in that show, uh, the whole time I was, it was kind of like a sitcom with, with really great songs. Yeah. And as we were doing that show, I said, you know, I, this is, I, I belong in television. I, this is where my talent is. I, I should be on a sitcom. And I think that's what I'm suited for the best. Yeah. And we moved to LA because my husband, Ben Lanzaroni, had the opportunity to come out and write music for Happy Days. That's right. Uh, yeah, that was all on him. I was along for the ride and uh, he did really well. And I started going out on auditions for TV shows. And um, and I did quite, quite a lot of TV before Mr. Belvedere came along, but I, I knew that that's where I belonged. I, I, I felt a connection to the camera. I liked the intimacy of the form. I liked that it was always different. Yeah. And I said, yeah, that, I think I'm going to do that. I, I, I had no plan. You don't have a plan, but I said, I think that's where I'm going to, I think that's where I'm going to land. And you guys 
really gelled, as I was saying. It really felt like a real family, the way you played off each other and complimented each other uh, so beautifully. The set must have been a very pleasurable set to be on. It was. It was everybody's second home. And we were absolutely each other's TV family. I mean, to this day, I think of them as my as my my family, my other family, my TV children, and I have TV grandchildren, and my TV husband, and his wife is my TV other wife. Yeah, you know? <laughs> um, yeah I, I thought the show was really well cast. I think that we all did uh, blend very well together, and we, we all. Uh, respect for each other and yeah. and a lot of the good feeling on the set came from Bob Uecker himself yeah. who was the who is the greatest guy uh, there's no star trip with him there's no ego there's no, no nothing it was regular a regular guy yeah totally regular guy very democratic set. Everybody was, the prop man, master was as important as the stars. It just, that was Bob's insistence. And Christopher Hewitt, of course, our most beloved and adored Mr. Belvedere. He and I had known each other for a long time. He actually directed me in a musical in New Jersey years before. So we were thrilled, thrilled to be back together. Uh, and the kids were so smart and so loving and so willing to go along with the the craziness of yeah. some of our plots and some of the all the silliness and we felt very protective of them and we i think the adults took really good care of them and and prided ourselves on the fact that we we were the responsible adults and we weren't going to let anything bad happen to them and uh and they reciprocated with their loyalty and their affection. I mean, to this day, I had to do something similar to this that I was in charge of, uh, a concert that I produced and yeah. I, and I uh, on a Zoom webinar, and I said, oh my God, this is how it has to be, but I don't know what to do. So the first the world. <laughs> guys I called were my two TV boys who are yes. both in production now. I called Rob Stone mm -hmm. and Bryce Help. Beck, and I said, okay, you guys, you got to talk me through this. You are you are now in charge of me, and I will do whatever you tell me to Take do. Take care of mom. <laughs> Absolutely. And they were there. Absolutely. Whatever I need, whatever, whenever, there's no question. So you all stay in touch, which is beautiful. Yeah, yeah. And Trace Chris talk, I, I've heard, you know, through the air of a, of a possible reboot of the series, or has that, if that ever came along, would you love that? Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> I you have heard, heard it here, no folks. Years. He's ready. I Give her no a call. Years to that effect. We had a wonderful Zoom uh, cast reunion a year or so ago uh, that we did as a benefit for the Actors Fund. And that nice. was that was swell. It was just it was so sweet to be together. Um, but I have heard nothing about about a reboot. It's hard when your title character is no longer it's gone. It's gone. Um, I think that's. That might be part of the problem. Yeah, look at that. Look at that group of silly people. <laughs> <laughs> it would be hard to, yeah, replace him. He was uh, so suited for that role. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, suited for that role. You know, you mentioned uh, you've done a lot of different things. Of course, people know you for the music. They know you for Mr. Belvedere. But I heard that you also have a craving for M&Ms. <laughs> oh my God, look at that. That's a commercial yeah. from yeah. what, 1980? I would say at least from 80, yes. And I bet you sold a lot of M&Ms for the company, you and the gang there. I tell <laughs> they you. They melt in your mouth, not in your hand. That's what I'm talking about, your incredible versatility. Oh, Right, it says 1980 right on the picture. Right on the picture. Right on the, right after we moved here to LA, and um, yeah, yeah. Oh my gosh! The incredible versatility of <laughs> uh, of Eileen Graf. Yeah. I I also uh, want to show people a little more of the incredible 
versatility as well. Take a look at this gang. Use this do-it-yourself book a lot. This book too, our first national checkbook. Our Western bank card is the only check guarantee card accepted by Arizona merchants and at banks in 11 Western states. At the first day in my tellers, we can do our banking anytime. We've got credit reserve too, so I can write checks for more than our balance for unexpected expenses. I think you're going to need it, hon. Get the best checking account in Arizona. At the first, more than a name, it's promise. <laughs> <laughs> you, I, you, you I, did it all. I tell you, my voice is so high. I don't know why <laughs> I was talking so high in that spot. <laughs> and here's another proof of her incredible versatility. No fair, Susan. You get all the fun clothes. What's holding you back? Little things like tummy, hips. Well, shape up with no-nonsense control top pantyhose. Oh, really look trimmer? On the spot, this control panty is ribbed to gently smooth and firm where you need it. Some different. I'll buy that. And this dress, too. Oh, no-nonsense control top, reinforced toe or sandal foot for a prettier figure and a no-nonsense price. <laughs> Amazing stuff, huh? <laughs> You know, I did several. Uh, oh no, that not 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 for no nonsense. And I think that actress, she was a doll. I forget her name, but she was on a soap opera. I think. Um, uh, Susan Blanchard. Susan Blanchard, right? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. I mean, you, that I, I, I'm like speechless when I watch those kinds yeah. of commercials that we just did them. Yeah. And, and and we made a lot of money. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Maureen is watching in Arizona and she says, what's your secret to staying so beautifully young? Maureen, you're so nice. Thank you. From One Ari of our lovely viewers. Yeah. Aw. You know, we did, I did several of those Arizona bank commercials. The bank commercials. Yes. Yeah, um, and some print ad for, for Arizona bank. They were, they were really, they were quite nice to me. Yeah. And it was so hot. I bet it's hot yeah. there today, Maureen, right? <laughs> I think it's like 117 there or something. Yeah, it was crazy. So you know, you they would rush you from the makeup trailer to the to the set, so you didn't melt before you had to be on camera. It was so hot, but it was. Yeah, I did a lot of commercials. I did a lot of commercials in New yeah. York. Viva uh, paper towels and and so yeah. many. Yeah, so yeah. many. Yeah, uh, yeah. We uh, we also have uh, a little bit of you singing. Uh, and we want to show that too, because I want people to hear your incredible voice if they haven't, uh, if they know you just from the television and Mr. Belvedere and everything else, uh, that you've got this incredible whole other career as a uh, Grammy nominated singer. And here's a little clip and, uh, and we'll be back. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Eileen Graff. Woo!
Gershwin fans here. One of these mornings, you're gonna rise up singing. Then you'll spread your wings and you'll take to the sky. Pretty amazing. Pretty amazing. Look at the comments coming in as well. Wow. So powerful. That's from Merlin, who is watching in Ontario, Canada, and she's loving what uh, she just heard. Thank you, Merlin. We appreciate that. More comments coming in here. My friend Maureen in Arizona. Fabulous. Wow. Juanita <laughs> watching in South Africa says, wow, beautiful voice. Kathleen in New York City beautiful voice. <laughs> Thank you. Good stuff, huh? You know, a lot of the, those clips were from a show that we did here in LA at the Magic Castle uh, that had a, a cabaret series for a little while. And it was a magical place to work. You know, the Magic Castle is an internationally famous place for magicians from all over the world. You know, once you play the Magic Castle, your name is on the map in terms of magicians. And they had a cabaret series for a little while. And I just got myself right in there because I love the castle. And uh, the audiences were so amazing. And we had so much fun. And, uh, of course, singing my husband's incredible arrangements is always such a pleasure. Such a pleasure. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Again, blessed be for sure. Um, some other incredible things just to show the versatility of you and your extraordinary talent. You even got a chance to work with the one and only Rodney Dangerfield. What was that like? And that was, of course, Ladybugs. <laughs> <laughs> Ladybugs. I mean, to this you day. You were terrific in that. Oh, thank you. To this day, people will come up to me and say, I was doing soccer. This was a movie about soccer, you know, kids soccer, girls soccer. I was playing soccer. It's the only movie that ever was about girls soccer. And there <laughs> Rodney was hilariously funny. I mean, that's, that's the bottom line is that he had an incredibly fast wit. Um, everything he you know, it was the, for example, we'd be doing a scene and there would be a couple of jokes in the scene and maybe, yeah. and maybe the director said, I don't know about that. I don't like that joke so much. And, or they'd say, Rodney, can you come up with something else for this section of the scene? And yeah. he would rattle off like off the top of his head without <laughs> even trying three, four or five jokes and they could pick and choose what they wanted. And I just would, I was in awe yeah. of that ability. Just so fast. Unbelievable, huh? Yeah. yeah. And that must have been a hilarious set to be on. <laughs> I tell you, it it was wild. You know, any place that he is, and you yeah. know, he was he was um, you know, how often do you get a chance to work with a, a legend like, like that? that? Yeah. And I would say, you know, I've read I've read about how you started in the show business, Rodney, but just tell me more. Tell me more stories. And he would be perfectly willing just to sit in between takes or whatever and tell me stories. And I thought that was incredibly generous of him. Um, yeah, we had we had fun, and the and the kids in the movie were great. Uh, being out on location with um, with Jack Hay and Tom Parks, and uh, you know, it was it was it was great. It was great. Absolutely. Gary in Iowa says, I looked on Amazon and found you have a CD 
baby's Broadway lullabies. Yes, you know, I, I, I can't reach right now. I have a whole stack of them sitting right over there that I can't reach. Do you? <laughs> yeah, we did um, this CD years ago, uh, a few years back, um, because I used to sing Broadway show tunes to my daughter for lullabies, because what else am I going to sing to her? And everything, it, 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 they were so pretty, these Broadway show tunes done in a different way. And so I said to my husband, why don't we do a whole record and we will arrange all these Broadway show tunes as long and Broadway, Broadway lullabies, which um, was nominated for a Grammy. And uh, it, it was it was great. I, I don't know if you're losing me or if I've lost you, Jim. Oh, there you are. Okay. Now we see you. Yeah, we, we see you and hear you. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I don't you I love lost that? You. The wonderful <laughs> internet, I tell you. <laughs> oh, my gosh. I know. But um, it was a, the, the, the record came out great. Um, yeah. You can still, you can download it on all the places that people do that. And yeah. it's awesome. Spotify, <laughs> Amazon, iTunes. Yeah. yeah. All, all of them. I get for $11 a month. <laughs> yes. My royalties. <laughs> um, we've got another quick clip here too. Again, you're so versatile and you're so talented. No matter what they throw at you, you just pick it up and you run with it. Tell us about In the Things We Carry. We have a little clip of that. Uh, the Things We Carry was... Uh, uh, a movie about um, uh, a, a family uh, that was dealing with the drug addiction of the mother, and um, it was very heartfelt. It was it was it was tough. It was tough to do, but the uh, the Lobit sisters, who this was their passion project, it was basically was about their family. Uh, we shot it right here in the valley, and I got to play a character that I never get to play this kind of character, and it was so fulfilling, and so it was such a, a meaningful film. Uh, I, I liked it a lot, I, and it did really well on the on the festival circuit, as they yeah. say. Yeah. Do you like uh, drama? Do you like because obviously comedy come in your wonderful comedic timing, but do you like the dramatic roles as well, Eileen? Oh gosh, of course. You know, you, you like everything. There's, there's nothing that, uh, I don't know that I want to be in a horror movie, but you know, you never know. Um, <laughs> like our friend, uh, Dee Wallace. <laughs> she's been the in so queen. many of them. Yeah. She's the, and she's such a pussycat. You know, she's like the nicest woman walking the earth and she's in all the, and also like my friend, Adrienne Barbeau, you know, oh, yes. she's, she's a greaser. She was in the original, original Broadway production of Grease just find this niche that they're really good at. And I say, my God, you guys are so good at this thing that you're nothing like. <laughs> I <can't laughs> acting. Oh, I get it. It's acting. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Here's that clip. It's really, really cool. It's just a short clip, just showing oh. Eileen doing her magic once again. Come in. Sorry to interrupt, but I had an idea. Maybe Ricky's at Celia's. I can probably find her address for you. Okay. Thanks. Just a yeah, little I've teaser, but that was cool. That was some role you took on, huh? Yeah, I, it was. She was like a developmentally delayed yeah. woman who was living in a motel. Yeah, and uh, to try to find the the right balance between yeah. her and she had a huge heart. This this character and she cared yeah. so much, and uh, trying to find the right respectful balance in that character was was a challenge that I loved and I. I, it, it was it was a very special experience. You took on another uh, very interesting role, and that was Clara Tucker. <laughs> well, how much do we love her? <laughs> <laughs> Tell oh, us about that one. <laughs> oh my gosh! Again, this showing your incredible versatility, you do it all. 
this was the most fun. I loved Heart of Dixie. Everybody was so nice on Heart of Dixie and so beautiful. I mean, I, you, I would get on that stage and just look at everybody and say, you guys, I don't know who to look at first. You're all so gorgeous. <laughs> and they were so talented. And I loved Clara Tucker. And I loved working with Eric Pierpoint, who was my, played my husband on the show. I just got to be mean and nasty, not but in a, in a very Southern Belle kind of way. Yeah. And just always wheedling and trying to get my way and wearing lots of hair, gigantic, and lots of makeup, and, uh, and 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 an accent. I got to do a southern accent, which I hadn't done since I think my first one of my first jobs in television. I played a really horrible southern Civil War era uh, character. Um, and it just was, it was so much fun and they yeah. were so good to me. It was, it was, gosh. Yeah. yeah I like that. I like that job a lot. That was, a, that was another. <laughs> Look at all that hair. I mean, I kept saying bigger, bigger, bigger. And they said, all right, you know, we have to be realistic a little bit. Thought, all right. All right. <laughs> <laughs> we got another cool shot here. This is something, uh, you got some precious people here with you too. Tell us about this. Yeah. This was an episode of Mr. Belvedere yeah. where I played <laughs> two roles. I played good Marsha and bad Marsha. And there was a, I had a, an identical twin out there in the universe who was a crook, who was a criminal, but they arrested the wrong person. So I was, I ended up in jail with Rosemary. Rosemary, yeah. Actress, I can't remember her name, but she was brilliant. She's a brilliant actress. She does a lot of repertory work. And um, the woman, uh, the woman who was in um, Zelda, who was in, um, uh, what? oh gosh, I'm losing my mind. Yeah, I know. <laughs> it's like being on a game show, right? Quiz oh, show. please. So in this episode, I was good, Marsha, wrongfully put in jail, and I rallied everybody to see the bright side of things, and we all sang so a deer. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> it was so silly. But to work with Rosemary, give me a oh, that's How like fun is that, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. That's that's million dollar there. Absolutely. Absolutely. Got a couple more really cool shots that I wanted to uh, throw into the mix here. Uh, Look at that one. Yeah, this was a, another special job. Of course, yeah. the late Charles Grodin, who just yes, yeah, just away. recently and Ned Beatty yesterday yeah. and John Gabriel, and yeah. John Gabriel, my friend John. Uh, and yeah. John Gabriel and Charles Grodin were best friends. So, That's right. Uh, yeah, That's it's right. been a hard time for their families. Yeah. Um, this was a wonderful production of Charlie's Aunt. Um, the other woman in the picture is Muse Small. She and I did Grease together on Broadway. She was the original Frenchie on Broadway in Greece. And we found ourselves in this fabulous production of Charlie's Aunt together, having the most fun with this all-star cast. We did the play live on stage for a couple of weeks, and then it was filmed for um, a Universal, had a, an arts and entertainment cable station for a while. So it played on there, and then it played on PBS several times. And we worked with... Um, uh, and Fran and Francis and Ephraim Zimbalist Jr. and Joyce Boulafont and I, I can't even remember Jamie Widows and Victor Garber and it was again just an amazing opportunity that I say how did that, how did that happen how did how does how do all these things happen I'm glad they did I'm not sure how it all happens but I'm really glad that it, that it did. Speaking of being surrounded by other incredible talent and great friends, this is a terrific picture. Oh, these are my girls. Yeah. This was from a benefit for the Actors Fund. Um, in this picture are some of the most wonderful talents ever. Starting to my, as you're looking at the picture, down on the bottom is Mary Jo Catlett, whose voice is heard on a million cartoons. She's been in a bazillion TV shows. On top of her is Joanne Worley, of course. Everybody knows Joanne. 
Next to me on the other side is Jane A. Johnston, who did many Broadway shows and is a wonderful singer and performer. Then Nancy Duso, who was uh, the first co-host on Good Morning America. That's she was right. On the, the Ted Knight Show, Too Close for Comfort. Uh, the redhead is the inimitable Carol Cook. And in the middle is Karen Morrow, who is one of the major singing and acting talents uh, of, of all time and one of my very, very good buddies. Mm. Lots and lots of what we call lovity in that picture. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And that's great when you're able to get together and do wonderful things for causes. I know you're very involved in a lot of different things that, um, you know, inspire and empower and lift people up. And I think that's really beautiful because, you know, in our busy lives, a lot of times, uh, sometimes people forget to, to give back just because they're always trying to clear that inbox and, you know, take care of their day events and chores and everything they have to do. But, uh, taking time to do that, which you're known for doing, I think is very beautiful, Eileen. Well, thank you. You know, I've been involved with the Actors Fund for years now. I'm an officer of the Western Council of the Actors Fund, which played a tremendous role the Actors Fund did during the pandemic, helping yeah. those of us in our business survive. Yeah, We distributed over $20 million to over 16,000 entertainment and arts professionals in need through the pandemic, which is many, 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 many times more what we usually distribute. And we had such an amazing outpouring of support from people outside of show business as well. You know, people who realize that, you know, we're sitting here watching Netflix 24 hours a day, but wait a minute, all those people that are on those shows entertaining us, they're all out of work and they're yeah. all in, and they're in need. And um, musicians and all of them. Yeah. Every, every profession in front of and behind the camera on stage and backstage, every office agents, uh, casting directors, TV announcers, and uh, the Actors Fund the did food it. places, the vendors, the restaurants yeah. around them. Yeah. Well, yeah. So it, it's been, you know, we're starting to see, of course, the light at the end of the tunnel. Yeah. And business is starting to come back. And uh, But it's going to take years for a lot of the people who were impacted yeah. to be able to build that um, financial safety net. And so many people lost their health insurance. So many people, because our it's health not so easy to just get that back quickly, no, right? It isn't because in our business, you either have to earn a certain amount of money per year, and when you're not working, you're not making any money. No we money. have to work a certain number of weeks a year in order to qualify. So yeah. nobody was working, and so many people got thrown off of their health insurance. And the Actors Fund has done a fantastic job, along with the Motion Picture Fund, um, in helping people find and secure health insurance. Yeah, that's, you know, how have you stayed? I, I've asked this question of some of the guests who've come on the show during this particular year, 13, 14 months now. How have you stayed collaborative, creative, connected, and uh, sort of sane through all of this? And people say, Jim, uh, the sane part I'm still working on. <laughs> <laughs> well, we've been working on that since birth. So, yeah. you know. Um, I, I was super lucky. You know, I, I live in a nice house. I get along with my husband. That's a plus. <laughs> those are two those are two good things. I don't have to, I didn't have to worry about paying the grocery bill. But creatively and collaboratively, that's a really good way to put it. I produced uh, a, a wonderful concert with some of my girlfriends that we did in benefit for the Actors Fund. I continue to teach. I teach vocal performance along with my husband. Yes, do. And we've been doing this for, for years. And when the pandemic came along, I reached out to my students and I said, you guys, we can't meet anymore in person. You want to try to do it on Zoom? And they said, yes, please. So we've been working on Zoom through the pandemic, holding, having classes every week, singing for each other, hanging out with each other. We did two Zoom uh, concerts with with our students and uh tell us about that Th those performance workshops are extraordinary tell us about how it works and how people can get involved i think it's very cool that you're doing that oh thank you yeah you can find us on facebook making the song your own vocal performance workshop i've got um 
a, a Facebook page if you want to uh, message me through that. Although we are going to be doing it now. We're going to go back to in person. But one yeah. of the great things about doing it in Zoom is that I had students from different places that were had moved away from LA who could still come and do Zoom classes. So we, um, our students come from many, many different walks of life, many different professions. I've got uh, pr professionals. In fact, one of my students, Carolyn Hennessy, was just nominated for a daytime Emmy. We're so ah, excited for her. Congratulations. Um, and uh, I have professional students and I have students who were maybe music majors in college. And when they got out of college said, you know, I'm not cut out for this life of insecurity. I'm going to do something else. Right. So they became teachers or lawyers or flight of judges or casting directors. So many different, but they're, the love of music and singing is so strong that somehow they find us and they come to us and we develop their performance skills and we work on songs and we work on their voices and we work on community. And our singing community, they call us our singing family, was one of the things that really helped see all of us through. We knew that on Saturday, half the class on Saturday, half the class on Sunday, we were going to be sitting together on Zoom, making music. And we looked forward to it so much. And we, we talked about how we were feeling and how we were doing. And uh, it was a wonderful anchor for the week, I think, for all of us based in the magic of making music together. Mm. And that is a beautiful thing when you're able to do that and, and you're helping sort of foster and inspire and empower and facilitate that for so many who might not get a chance or they, you know, sort of have those self-limiting beliefs. I'll never be able to do mm -hmm. it. I don't know how to do it. And I think that's a beautiful thing. One Another thing that you did that you tackled uh, with some other fabulous people is you co-authored this book <laughs> and i think that's pretty cool too what the other mothers know. <laughs> tell us about this one <laughs> well that was quite a while ago yeah I, I was sitting with my girlfriend donna rosenstein who is a big big time casting director she's uh i mean she was vice president of casting at abc and she is now one of the major casting executives at amazon and we were sitting um we went out to lunch one day. We were going to see my daughter in a show. That's right. We were seeing my daughter in a show. We were eating before the show. And she was telling me a story about she didn't know that for the, her class, her daughter's class party, you have to get the, order the hamburgers ahead of time. She thought she could just pick up ham, 35 hamburgers and go right to the class. And um, she said some of, the, some of the mothers knew. They knew all of this stuff. We're in show business. What do we know about this? And I said, yeah, what those other mothers know, they really know. And we both looked at each other and said, what the other mothers know. I think there's a book there. So Donna is so smart and so persistent. We found, uh, we hooked up with another another mom, another showbiz mom who was an actual writer, Michelle Gendelman. You know, she writes for TV shows and animation and she teaches writing. And we made a little partnership and we wrote a really, what I think is a funny book about all the things that you don't know you're supposed to know right. <laughs> when you're a mom. All those like, things you don't like know. What would be maybe one or two that you could share with the audience in case there are <laughs> some watching who could be of great help with that info tonight? <laughs> one of my favorites was if you have a good carpet, roll it up and put it into storage. <laughs> because it's going to get ruined if you have white couches cover <laughs> them and cover them in towels yeah it's all get ruined and yeah. a lot of it was just planning ahead which yeah. is something that you know in show business yeah you know this everything is fast yes. everything you do is fast they call you on monday you're working on wednesday you're shooting on thursday the set was built by tuesday yeah. we fast but the rest of the world doesn't function like that right. So a lot of it was planning ahead. If you want a venue for a party, start looking three months ahead of time. And I'm like, what? It's just a kid's party. And then, no, no. All the other mothers knew to right. line up ahead of time. I didn't know that. So there's there's a lot of, there's some fun things like that. We had some recipes, like how to make good chicken soup, you know. 
stuff like good that. Good stuff. Yeah. Good really stuff fun. for the soul. The, uh, I remember my sister and I doing plays in our, uh, in the, one of the bedrooms and we would have our parents, uh, and other relatives come in and set up the seats and the bed would be the <laughs> stage and we'd have a rope go from one wall to the other. And they would, would use like a bedspread to go over the rope and then pull it back when we're ready to do our thing, you know, we're probably 11 or 12 years old. And of course I remember my mother saying, is that, is that the good bedspread you're using? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so. So <laughs> we didn't charge you ticket prices. We, you know, we made you lemonade and pop jiffy pop popcorn for you. <laughs> Isn't it interesting how many people tell stories about putting on shows when they were kids? Yes. Putting on shows in the backyard or the I never did that. And... But so many you hear that same story over and over again. And I always yeah. find it so heartwarming. My daughter did it. Your you daughter know, did she, it. Friends were always putting on shows like people would be over for dinner and before we knew it, we're putting on the nutcracker yeah. and they put on their tutus and their shoes and they would like do the nutcracker for us or we're putting on a fashion show now and they would and some people that passion is there from the from the uh, earliest childhood as apparently and obviously it was for you given what you're doing now 24 hours a day that's a passion. I used to run around with that little Panasonic uh, cassette recorder and pretend I was uh, an interviewer, a reporter, sort of interviewing the relatives. And, <laughs> and now what's very cool about that is I bring out those cassettes and I listen to them mm. from back then. And, and some of the relatives are no longer around, but you hear their voices and laughter and I'm so glad that I had the wherewithal that early on to sort of, I've always been very big about capturing moments in time. Uh, I think it's probably why I work in television, radio and all of this, because it, we're capturing moments in time, which can be fleeting. Uh, time, is, if there's anything we've all learned about the last year of our lives is life is short, life is valuable, life is important and it's fleeting and it's precious. So I think I've always known that early on. So I've always wanted to have opportunities to capture it and share it because I love inspiring people. I love empowering people. It's very big to me. I love to work on projects and do things collaboratively or independently where other people's lives are impacted for the better. You're a perfect example of that with the work that you, that your husband, that your daughter, that you all do, that your dad, your family, you know, some of the uh, wonderful things that were instilled in you and your family early on that we pay forward and carry on. It's incredibly important, isn't it? Absolutely. I, you know, my mother was um, uh, a very interesting person. She was a music major in school. She was a piano player. She uh, loved music her whole life, but she was never, um, she didn't pursue a, a career as a teacher. She stayed home and, and took care of us, but she was such an incredible role model. She would find things that needed to be done and did them. There was no glee club at my little brother's elementary school. So they, she and my dad started a choir because they should have it. They should have music. My mother was um, a passionate Hadassah lady. She believed in, you know, coming from living through the war and living through the horrors of the Holocaust, strongly believed that the Jewish people needed someplace safe to live. So she believed strongly in that. She, um, she helped everybody in the neighborhood. She used to, she, when I was a little girl, we would knock on doors for the March of Dimes. She was just incredible in terms of how she felt that it was our responsibility on this earth to do good. She didn't believe that there was an afterlife. She said, what you do, you have to do it here and now. Yeah. And uh, that was a lesson that was really, oh, she just pounded that into our heads. And as a way of honoring my mom, I think that's that's one of the reasons that I, that I do a, a lot of the things that I've done with the various nonprofits through the years. And I've worked with several uh, closely and uh, I, I just believe in it and I, I believe in what my mom believed in and um, 
and and I wish you know you had the you had the the smarts to interview your relatives. I wish I had done that with my family. My cousin Lori Graff, who is an author, who had a wonderful book out called "You Have to Kiss a Lot of Frogs," which was a bestseller <laughs> about her dating life. Um, <laughs> but she was so smart. She interviewed our grandmother, and. We've got grandma telling stories. Yeah. My grandmother was hilarious. Yeah. But I wish that we had done that with the relatives that came over from the old country. Yeah. What was their experience like ex escaping Europe and coming to New York and starting a life? Um, I, I wish we had done more of that. So I'm, I'm happy for you and I'm happy for your family that this was something that you recognized at a young age to get the stories of our elders because they are the foundation for everything that we are. Some wonderful s stories on cassette tape and, and VHS tape of them talking about what it was like growing up in the depression in New York City and, and, and incredible things like that, coming over from overseas and just what life was like. And it gives you a real appreciation of the things that we have today. Sometimes, you know, we're so busy doing what we do and uh, pressing the easy button all the time. But if it wasn't for those before that paved the way and believed in certain things, none of this would really exist for all of us. They were so brave. They were, I think about my grandparents coming over from uh, Austro Hungary yeah. with nothing, you know, just nothing. And sacrificing and working and doing everything they possibly could so that two short generations after here i am talking to you on a computer you know what they their <laughs> bravery in leaving home is something that uh those of us who are the the descendants of immigrants from not that long ago right is is something that we i i believe as a country, we all need to be grateful for and for everybody that has the courage to start over and do better for their kids. It's a, it's a, a overwhelming in, in, in what they did for us. Absolutely right. And, and paying it forward is such a beautiful thing, as I know you do. And, um, you know, when you look at these years and we've just touched a little bit of it uh, today, um, what are some of those blessings and those joys that uh, have continued to foster this inspiration that you have to want to, you know, create, to want to inspire us, make us laugh, make us think all the beautiful things that you do, not only as a brilliant actress, but through uh, song and, you know, verse and melody. For me, my greatest inspiration is always my family. It's wanting to uh, make them proud, <laughs> wanting to uh, be collaborative with our talent, wanting to uh, feel close, wanting to share that incredible fortune that I've had to have a great family, to have come from a great family, to have a fabulous daughter, a fabulous son-in-law who is a veterinarian in New York City. His name is Dr. Dan Smith, in case you're looking for someone in New York. Yes, <laughs> West Village Veterinary. Um, you see, I can't help it. I did a lot of commercials. So there's Nika and me, there we are. Um, I, everything comes to the love, everything comes down to family for me. And sharing the stories of family, sharing the support of family, helping other people find a family of friends if their if their family isn't everything that they needed it to be a chosen family and so many people were rejected by their families especially people in our business just rejected by their families and to to let people know that there are people may not be blood relatives but we are there for you we will help you get through your life we will encourage you we will nourish you we will do what we can to help you and uh all comes back to family for me beautifully said i always say that's the top for me as well um what are some of the things that 
you look forward to not just things reopening now so you can get out back on stage, back connected, but are there other things, we talked a little bit about possibly producing, directing, writing, but other things possibly even out of the world of entertainment and the limelight and the spotlight that Eileen still would love to tackle, to be a part of, to, to be involved in, in life? Well, just not on such a huge philosophical level, but I can't wait to start traveling again. I love to travel. My husband and I love to travel. I, I, we love to cruise. I love to see other countries, other cultures. Uh, I'm, I'm just waiting for the day that I can get out there and see the places that we haven't seen yet and do the things that we haven't done yet and meet the people that we haven't met yet. That's it. I think yeah. travel is really important. When you keep your brain open to see that everybody isn't just like you and they're doing fine without you. <laughs> right. The <laughs> world really doesn't just revolve around us. Yes. Let's see. What are they eating? Oh, that looks good. Maybe I'll learn how to cook that. What yeah. are they, how are they living? Oh, I like that. So that just in a nutshell is something that I'm really looking forward to is getting out back into the, the big world yeah. not just my little world of show business. I do have a cool photo here that popped up. Look at this oh. one. <laughs> Speaking of travel. <laughs> Speaking of travel, yeah. Tell That's us me and Joey Oresco in Super Train, which was one of the most expensive bombs ever <laughs> on television. It was supposed to be the love boat on rails yes. uh, with a mystery every week. I played the um, social director on yeah. the train. And Joey, I forget what Joey's job was, actually, to tell you the truth. It was a long time ago. But I talk about working. I mean, we worked with fabulous stars. The set was unbelievable. And they gave me an opportunity to sing on the show. Now, what more, what more could you want? They say... <laughs> You're like from Broadway, right? You sing. Yeah. You want to sing on the show? Yeah, yeah I want to sing on the yeah. show. Right. <laughs> you can give me any you just give me any opportunity to sing. I'm right. I'm right there. And here's a shot that says that. Just bring uh, it on. Just bring it, bring it on. on. You want me to do that? I got it. You want me to do that? I got it. <laughs> yeah. I think that's a nice picture. I like that picture. Oh, that's a fantastic. It really captures, you know, it's all in the eyes and the expression. <laughs> really captures. Um, just going back a little bit quickly, so does that one. And that's from Super Train. Super Train. Super Train. Super Train. Well, it sounded like a cool idea. It, 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 it was a cool it idea. Expensive, <laughs> right? Sometimes they just don't work the way you think Sometimes, they're going. Sometimes, yeah, the time period, uh, they got to not move it around. And there's a great shot, too. Oh, look at that cute girl. That, that I think, was from one of our very first um, uh, cast photo sessions yeah. that we had. Uh, what would you say today she was saying and thinking then, Eileen? I was probably thinking, what time is this going to be over? Because I have to pick my daughter up from preschool. <laughs> <laughs> that's, Always that's, a mom, right? Always a mom. But hold that, but hold that smile, right? <laughs> <laughs> I don't mean to be a wise guy, but, you know, I've always... It, it, it's important That's to me. Funny. Work yeah. is important and being a mom is important. And have you kept that balance? You know, it's not always easy. And you see sometimes evidence where of that not being successful, where you've been able, where people have been able to keep the balance of life. And it seems like you've been able to keep the balance as best as you've been able to. Uh, is there a secret or that you've just early on made priorities and there's certain priorities that will be tended to irrespective of all the other things that are going on. Well, I think before I was a mom, you know, I'm married to a composer and a musical director and a piano player and Ben and I worked together and we really understood each other's lives and what, and what was required. And, and so that balance was super easy. Then when I had the baby, um, I worked a little bit right after she was born, but it just was too hard. So I took a little break. And then when Mr. Belvedere came along, it was the perfect show. Uh, multiple camera comedies 
we worked for three weeks, then we had a hiatus week. We worked for three weeks, we'd have a hiatus week. We worked normal hours, worked from 10 to six. So I was home a lot. And we had a regular uh, couple of month hiatus in between seasons. So for someone like me, that kind of show was perfect. And the other jobs would sort of filter in. And I could always, I could take her on set. I could, you know, I Ben, Ben worked from home, whatever I couldn't tackle, he would tackle. I would take her to school in the morning, he'd pick her up in the afternoon. So uh, I think for my level of work and what I was doing at the time when it could have been a problem, the kind of work that I was doing, so lucky, so lucky, really worked for a regular kind of family person. Mm. Yeah, a mom on set and a mom off set. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's a beautiful and, and thing. She was always welcome on set. And she, she, to every yeah. taping, she and and everybody treated her just like the littlest kid. And uh, I just, sometimes I say, do you believe how, how you lucked out with that job? <laughs> that it came along at exactly the right time. Mr. Belvedere, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it sure did. It sure did. Um, really nice comment that came in from uh, Merlin in Canada. I think she was referring to this photo. She, oh no, Marty Thompson in Nashville, uh, who's a, uh, they call him the Aussie crooner is a singer, entertainer, or performer extraordinaire. That photo looks like the all American apple pie girl next door beauty. That's uh, so nice. Thank yeah, you. Yeah. Aww. Who's thinking about getting her child at, uh, preschool. <laughs> <laughs> A couple more comments coming in, some really nice things. Uh, Jane, who's watching in Sweden, one of our regular viewers. Cute then and still cute Eileen, very oh, beautiful. Uh, Merlin you, says, <laughs> uh, being a mom is always and forever. Joan oh. Sandow, thank you both for a lovely Monday evening. Uh, Juanita is watching in South Africa. A lovely conversation. Thank you, Eileen, for spending time with us and sharing your stories and wonderful career. Kathleen in New York City. This has been such a fun show. Loved all the photos and the stories. Thank you, Eileen. You are so lovely. Maureen in Arizona. Amen, Eileen. Um, talking about the book, the mother's book. That seems like a brilliant book. She's a mom herself. And Joan Sando says, Eileen, you're an American treasure. Thank you for coming on the Gym Masters show. Another American treasure. I'm so glad to have found the Gym Masters show. Thank you very much, Joan. We appreciate that. Beautiful I think words. While we're ahead, no, I was going to say, <laughs> yeah, that, that's good, folks. That's great. <laughs> but the thing is, I always wonder how do we print those out so we can put them on highway billboards? Really? Right? <laughs> My father has always said, whenever anybody says something kind to you or something nice about your work, tell them to put it in writing and please address it management. <laughs> <laughs> My father and his Irish humor. That's great. <laughs> That's it. I love that. You are amazing. And I don't know if you have anything to drink there, but I toast you. I toast you. Toast, toast, Thank toast. You. Cheers. Oh, the mug. oh, I like the mug. Let's see that mug. That's a cool mug. Oh, God, you know, I'm backwards here, so I can't. This is a mug that I had made up as a souvenir for Eileen Graf and Nico Graf Lanzaroni for when we did our duet show at 54 Below. Um, I had so much fun. I said, I must commemorate this. I didn't have a billboard, but I could get a mug. So there you go. <laughs> and cheers <laughs> to all of you. And thank, thank you for being so nice. Ah, my pleasure. And I hope to see you in the city too, real soon. Somebody else that was joining us tonight, Mr. George Burns was in the house <laughs> <laughs> with his cigar and his red hanky. And uh, he says his <laughs> love as well. Never got a chance to work with George, huh? <laughs> no, no. <laughs> a big fan, a very big fan. Really, really cool. You're the best, Eileen. Thank you for, again, everything uh, that you've done over your beautiful, illustrious career. You really are a treasure. Uh, Gary in Iowa throws in here. Thank you, lovely Eileen. You're now a lovely. Uh, <laughs> with all the awards, you know, there could be Academy Awards, Emmys, Tellys, Peabody's, Oscars, Grammys, I tell everybody. But when you get a lovely on the Gym Master Show Live, I would imagine your feet are probably tingling about now, right? I am all a Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Maureen says your energy is infectious, Eileen. I just love everything about you. Well, thank uh, good you. Good stuff. So 
Uh, this was a blessing, and I hope uh, you'll come back at some point. Good luck. Best of health to you and the family, my friend. And uh, I truly hope that the show met whatever expectations that you had and that you Absolutely. enjoyed the time with me, as, as I definitely have with you. Thank you so much for having me. It was really fun. It was a pleasure. You take care. Be well and keep smiling, Eileen, and okay. just keep being you, okay? Thanks. Bye-bye. Bye-bye now. Incredible Eileen Graff live here on the show. Christine Clifton comes in and says, Hi, Jim and Lovety friends. A great night in Lovety Hall. Eileen is a beautiful soul. She's had such a fantastic career, both a superb actress and singer. Inspirational conversation, nice photos as well. And thank you, Christine, watching in North Carolina, USA. We appreciate that. And uh, Merlin in Canada says, Thank you, Eileen, as well. And you throw in some nice hearts. Uh, She's amazing, isn't she? And a wonderful person inside and out. She's just really a beautiful person. And uh, she is a treasure. I know some of you have said that along the way. Super talent and comes from a wonderful family. And um, maybe, you know, what's great about what we do on the show with the conversations and the freestyle way we do it is you appreciate more and get to learn more about the guests about yourself, about me and about the guests collectively, because we do this in sort of that old school talk show way uh, where we don't rush the guests and it's warm and conversational. We just let it roll and ride and you get to learn. Now, the next time you see Eileen or you hear Eileen uh, perform, uh, you'll have another appreciation, a deeper appreciation of who she is and her backstory a little bit. And it will give you a a re-enhanced appreciation of the person as well as the talent. And that's a beautiful thing. Sometimes we don't take time in our busy lives to, to do all of that. Jane in Sweden says, I loved this too. So much fun and interesting to hear about everything she's done. And thank you, Jane in Sweden. Uh, Mary Bishop in uh, Florida says, thanks, Eileen. This was wonderful. Thank you, Mary, watching in Pine Island, Florida. Uh, USA as well. You guys are absolutely amazing. Want to let you know that coming up on Wednesday, the one and only Rosalind Kind is going to be with us here on the Gym Master Show Live. Yes, brilliant entertainer, singer, songwriter, of course, uh, sister to Barbara Streisand. She's going to be here as well. We look forward to that. Did you know on Saturday, the great grandnephew of the French actor Maurice Chevalier, the brilliant actor Alexis Chevalier, is going to be on the Gym Master Show Live. Can't wait to welcome him here. That's going to be on Saturday. Uh, he's going to be live from France. We were just chatting today on the phone. Alexis is all excited, and he's going to be here on Saturday. That's going to be absolutely amazing. Uh, the wonderful comedian and comedy writer and author and actor Jeffrey Marks is with us uh, this week on Thursday. So Thursday, we have Jeffrey Marks. Wednesday, the one and only Rosalind Kind. And of course, on Friday, Marty Thompson. The R.C. Crooner, the singer extraordinaire and songwriter and entertainer. He's going to be with us on Friday. Tomorrow, we have a brilliant author with us, David Fisher. David is a New York Times bestselling author, not just once, not just twice, not just 10 times, not just 20 times. A New York Times bestselling author some 29 plus times. He's extraordinary. This is an exclusive. He's going to be with us tomorrow night with this incredible book, Hot Off the Presses, The Executive Order, plus several other works. David Fisher is with us tomorrow. It's going to be absolutely amazing. And these are just some of the guests. Mar uh, Marion Ross from Happy Days originally, uh, Mrs. C. She's going to be with us with her son as well. They're going to be with us here on the show. Uh, live. If this is your first time watching, we welcome you to the Gym Master Show Live Entertainment Lifestyle Talk Show Series, where we're bringing back the lost art of conversation. We would love it if you subscribe to our YouTube channel, Gym Masters TV. Click that notification bell as well, so you don't miss any of our live daily episodes of JMS Live, our Entertainment Lifestyle Talk Show Series, also on location episodes, as well as our surprise pop-up shows. Sometimes I just 
pop up unannounced and we do incredible conversations with the viewers. We talk about a whole host of things about life and food and people and family and and careers and so much more. So uh, you'll be abreast of that when you subscribe to our YouTube channel, Gym Masters TV, and click the notification bell so you don't miss any of our incredible episodes. So again, amazing guests coming up here on the show and uh, the place for inspiring conversations, amazing entertainment, great guests from literally all around the world. And um, we always have a good time. Light, love, levity, and our famous levity. Let's take a look at a couple of more comments before we wrap up. Again, author David Fisher with us tomorrow, 29-time New York Times bestselling author. It's going to be an extraordinary broadcast. Mary Bishop says, another great show. Good night all to you, Mary in Florida. Juanita in South Africa. Great show, Jim. Eileen was lovely. Good night, everyone. Looking forward to the show tomorrow. Love the authors. Absolutely. Have a good night, Juanita. Good night, Jim, and all loveities. You too, Gary in Iowa. And um, you take care. You got a bad back. Take care of that. Take care of that. Rest. Take care of that. And uh, we're thinking of you. Kathleen is sending you lovety. And uh, yes, thank heavens for little girls, Maurice Chevalier. Uh, his great grand nephew, is Alexis, is going to be live on our show this Saturday. And um, you guys are the best. All the loveities chiming in here from around the world. Um, Eileen posted a private note. She says, Thanks, Jim. Take care. Good care. Stay safe, healthy. Bye bye. Uh, thank you, everyone. Uh, she. Just posted a little private message here. She was wonderful, and we thank her so much. Uh, wasn't she fantastic? Really, really fantastic. Again, you know, if you just knew her from Mr. Belvedere, and that was it, because, of course, you know, that was a widely known, still is, uh, series. Um, great show. See you tomorrow, and thank you. You're very welcome, and uh, maybe we'll get her. You should come on the Lovety Boat. That would be cool. <laughs> um, we thank Eileen Graff very much for gracing our presence tonight here on the Gym Master Show Live. And again, some of the pictures we showed earlier, and if you missed anything, you can see these before. We also played some great video. There is when she was on Mr. Belvedere with the whole cast as well, and with Rodney Dangerfield and the movie Ladybugs, and on and on, of course, starting out one of the first wonderful productions, Promises, Promises on Broadway. Um, this as well, South Pacific too. Yes, that was part of um, Disney and ABC. She had an opportunity to be a part of that. We didn't get a chance to talk about that, but uh, if you ever get a chance to check that out, if it's available somewhere, that's with Glenn Close, of course, Harry Connick Jr. That was South Pacific. That was another brilliant production. And of course, there she is with her wonderful husband, Ben, a super talented uh, composer extraordinaire. And uh, she's just amazing. Amazing. And so all these other productions. Again, if you missed any of this, you can go back in the archive and watch this episode of the Gym Master Show Live. Once again, we are here to bring you light, love, and levity, as we always do. And uh, some amazing guests from Broadway, Hollywood, television, film, music. Uh, the arts, science, nature. Oh boy, got a nice uh, super chat. That's super chat, gang. We've been talking about that. That's something new. When you do something like that, and several of you have done that, that really helps us produce our show and all the content and all the hours behind the scenes. Thank you, Kathleen. You're amazing. Uh, and that also allows us to super highlight in special colors the comments during the show when somebody does the super chat. I think there's super chat and there's these super emoji stickers you can do. You can see that at the top of the comments uh, when you're posting live comments during our series, during our show, our episodes. If you see at the very top, it has super chat and it has super emoji stickers. So you just did the super chat. Kathleen, you're the best. Thank you so very much. Feel free, gang, to uh, take part in that if you want. We would love that. And uh, again, subscribe to the YouTube channel as well. Thank you, Kathleen. You're the best. Wishing you all a good night. Lovety hugs to one and all. And Joan says, thank you, Jim. Good night and loveties. And you too, Kathleen. Good night to all of you. You have work in just three hours there in Sweden. So you work in four hours. You give yourself another hour. Good. So get some sleep. <laughs> you guys are the best. Uh, 
Night Night Lovities, you as well. And uh, good night, Jim and all lovities to you as well. Another great show. Thank you very much. You guys, again, we'll be back. You're watching the Jim Masters Show Live. I'm your host, Jim Masters. A couple of things we always do before we wrap up. Don't forget to smile. Don't forget to share the lovity. We always say that. Kind of cool to do that. that. That just happened on our show. The whole lovity thing just happened. And I think it's been really something cool. The guests love it. The viewers love it. Um, I love it too. Find your Zen place. Mine, of course, is the ocean. My most Zen, like uh, Eileen said, nothing tops family and friends. And I agree with Eileen. That is my most Zen time, loving family and friends and loved ones. And then music and writing and cycling and tennis. Um, and of course, the ocean, swimming, surfing, boogie boarding, sailing it, uh, being in the ocean. I love it. That's the Atlantic Ocean here in the Northeast, United States. And of course, my work in television, film, and stage throughout the years. Love that. That's a Zen place for me as well. On camera, on air, behind the scenes. Uh, I absolutely love all of that. And uh, if you get a chance to do what you love and love what you do, gang, whew, you're blessed. There really is nothing better. Don't forget all the episodes of JMS Live, the Gym Master Show Live, are available on our YouTube channel. You can check it out 24-7, 365. If you want to see this episode again with our brilliant guest, film, television, stage, actress, and Grammy-nominated singer Eileen Graff, or anybody else, just look back and binge watch all you want on our YouTube channel at Jim Masters TV. And again, don't forget to uh, subscribe to the channel and click that notification bell so you don't miss any of our amazing episodes of the Gym Master Show Live. One more thing we tend to do, something special we do on our show when I remember to do it. I always tell you to relax, you guys. Take care of one another. Love one another. And uh, everybody's welcome here at the Gym Master Show Live Entertainment Lifestyle Talk Show Series. It doesn't matter, you know, your zip code, your income, your height, your weight, political views, religious views, uh, none of it. You're all welcome here. Don't forget to take time for yourself, love one another, and love yourself. It's important to do that. And don't forget to relax. Don't forget to relax. Watch some Mr. Belvedere reruns. <laughs> relax. We love you all. We toast you all. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for making this uh, series as phenomenal as it has become. Over 410, 15, 20 episodes so far and counting every single day. And it's a blessing. More guests, more conversation, more entertainment, more levity and levity coming up just for you here on the Gym Master Show Live. You guys have a good night. Thank you once again to Eileen Graff and thanks to all of you around the world for watching this episode live or Memorex <laughs> in the archives at Gym Masters TV. We'll see you tomorrow night. Good night.